and thank you for tuning in to another Pineapple Bytes video training session. In this video training session, we will review how you can create custom reports in Aloha Manager and save them to be able to be viewed at a later time. First thing you're going to want to do is log into your Aloha Manager. And once you're logged in here, you're going to go to the reports. And in this first scenario, we'll go ahead and we'll create a, a customized sales report. So then we'll go to Aloha point of sale, sales, sales again, and sales summary. So now here we can have a select report settings. And you hit this drop down, you can see that there's currently only the default one that's in there. What we can do is you can go into settings here. And you can see currently what the default, it will say up here, default. And it will show you what's included in this default report. If you kind of click on each one, you can kind of see exactly how everything is set up for this default report. I recommend always keeping the default the exact same as what it originally came with. Don't manipulate this in any way. Um, if you do want to create something that's maybe a little different, what you can do is you can hit this add button right here. So if you go ahead and hit add, it's going to ask you to put in a name of the report. So we can just put in test sales report. So you can call this whatever you want. And this start with, we can put default. So basically what this means is, what do you want this report to start with for its settings? So for this particular example, we could either hit none which would have the report completely blank. Or we can hit start with default, which will take exactly how our default report is set up, but then it will allow us to be able to manipulate it and change the things that are on it. So if we just go ahead and hit OK here, you can see here that now we have sales report settings for test sales report. It automatically included everything that was on the default report. So you can see these are all the exact same. But now if I want, I can move things over and take things off if I want. So I can go ahead and hit petty cash. I can move it over to my sales report. Uh, things like tip share or anything that you want to want it to do over here, um, you can move over to here. Oh, we already got tip share. We'll take that one off. So you can move things back and forth just clicking on it. Uh, you can also make changes on the right-hand side here if you need to for anything that's particular that you're looking for. Um, sales by owner mode, some people like that. You can also arrange how things are on here as well. So if we wanted to move voids, we want to show that at the end of the report instead of in the middle. You just highlight it and we just keep hitting this down arrow and it will move that down in our report. So we're going to go ahead and hit save here. So now you can see in the select report setting window, we have our test sales report that we just created and we have the default. So if we close completely out of this, and we go back into that exact same report again, it's got to remember the last report that you had set there. So you got to remember, if, if you're ever looking to go back and view the default, you'll have to go back and switch this back to its default and then run your report. Same thing if you're looking to get back to your test one, you just always got to make sure that you select the proper one here, as it will remember the last one that you were on. So that's a way that you can create a new new sales report. Uh, you can also go in and uh, create new reports for like a product mix. So if we go to our reports, Aloha point of sale, product mix, product mix again. The same here, we get the default, same thing. We can just hit add. And let's say we want to call it beer, for instance. We can use start with the default. I always like to start with the default just so I'm starting with something and then I can just kind of manipulate it. So I'll go ahead and hit OK on that. Now with our product mix report settings, we have a whole bunch of different options that we can pick here. So include sales and retail categories. If we have this check marked, it's going to include every item that resides in a sales or a retail category, which is basically every item in your database. Uh, if we want to get specific, 
we can unflag that and then flag include non-sales and retail categories. And then you can see here, we have a listing of non-sales categories we created in the database. So if I only wanna see domestic beer, for example, I'm just gonna highlight that non-sales category. So this report will only show me items that have been sold that are in this domestic bottle non-sales category. You got some different sorting options you can do. Same item, different price separately. This is a good flag because what this enables you to do is let's say you have a particular item in your database that is used in multiple locations throughout your menu at different prices. Uh, a big thing with this would be like fries or, or a side salad. Maybe um, you charge five cents more or a dollar more for a particular side with a particular meal. Uh, but others, maybe that side is given away for free. Um, what you'll notice is if you don't have this check marked, then you'll see one line item called fries, but the price will look a little weird, uh, the selling price. Uh, the selling price is made up of the average price that you sell it as. So if you sell this as zero dollars in a whole bunch of locations but you also sell it as three dollars in some other locations in your menu then that price that shows it being sold is not going to be three dollars it's going to take the average of the amount of them sold and since some of them are zero and some of them are three it's going to average that number out so the only way you can you can see on a product mix report which ones are actually being sold at what particular price is if you unflag same item or if you, sorry, if you flag same item, different prices separately. So this will then break them out on your report. So you'll see that you sold 20 at $0 and three at $3. So you can see that kind of difference there of what you're selling and how many of each. Also, we have exclude zero priced items. Uh, a lot of the times people don't wanna see zero priced items that have been sold because uh, it makes the report quite big. So they'll flag exclude zero price items so they don't see that, as well as include non-sold items. Generally don't have this check marked as, I don't really care about seeing items that I haven't sold. I just want to look at ones that I, I have sold. Um, and then you got certain options here. You can do sales percentages by category. You can display item price by its item price itself versus discounted price. So sometimes people will want to see the display price by discounted price because they'll have items that are in a promotion or a comp or they have items that have been comped off and they want to see the the total end selling price of that item uh, then you you can flag it between discounted price and item price depending on which one you want to do there same with your sorting options here you can sort by sales quantity sold profitability or item number uh, you can also group it by category, employee, employee by category, revenue center, revenue center by category. So sometimes people like to do a report by employee. So then they'll be able to see how many of each item that a particular employee has sold. So maybe they're running some type of event or some type of competition where they can see, okay, you know, if you sell, first person to sell 100 or whoever sells 100 of this particular item in one month uh, gets a $25 gift card or something along that, that idea. So we have domestic bottle here, flag, so I'm going to hit save on that. So now you can see here that I have my select report setting. I have my beer and I have my default. And just like before, if I was to leave it at beer and then go back to this report again, it's still going to be flagged as beer. So you're going to want to make sure that you move it back to default if you're looking to go back and view the default ones. And then if you're looking to get to those custom ones that you created, you just select it from your drop down here, move back and forth. So those are some generic ways that you can create some customized reports and save them as templates in Aloha Manager. And uh, hopefully this helped you out and uh, have a great day.